Hey guys, Josh here, and in this video, I'll be sharing with you some beginner tips and tricks that I would recommend doing every day if you want to make the most out of your experience with Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life. Let's start. My first tip is make sure you talk to everyone daily. In A Wonderful Life, relationships are so important. Not only do you need to get married in the first year, I have a video on that if you want some additional tips, but also most characters will reward you in one way or another for your friendship. Some will give you music records, new outfits, or help you get the last upgrades for your different tools, which are very useful to have. Ideally, if you don't want to miss out on anything, you will need to have everybody at 90 friendship points, which is halfway through the red bar. Befriending everyone might seem a bit overwhelming at first, but the good thing is relationships do not decay over time, and if you just take a second to talk to someone as you cross their path each day, after a few years, you will be close friends with most people. Of course, you can also speed things up by giving them gifts. Things like flowers, eggs, milk and fish are pretty good options for most villagers. And a lot of them will also accept more than one gift a day. So try things out and soon enough, everybody will love you. Just make sure you start befriending people early if you don't want to scramble a few years later as you're trying to unlock everything at once. My second tip is to make sure you talk to the sprites daily. There are more than 120 cooking recipes in this remake, and while you can learn some of them by searching around people's houses, befriending them, or accepting requests, the sprites can teach you all of them. However, they can only teach you one recipe per day, so if you want to cook all of these different dishes, it is a good idea to take the habit of visiting the sprites daily. After a certain point, the sprites will tell you that they don't have any recipe to teach you, if that is the case, you might need to raise your cooking level in order to unlock more categories and the recipes from those categories. At first, you'll only be able to make soups and salads, but level up your cooking once to unlock hors d'oeuvre and sweets, and level it up a second time to unlock main dishes. Each dish will give a different amount of experience depending on its complexity, and you can cook multiple at once to gain experience. It's not necessary to cook them one at a time. A message will tell you once your cooking has improved, and from that point on, you will be able to learn new recipes from the sprites. Also, keep in mind that some recipes require an oven, and for those, you will have to wait until the second year. One last good thing to know about cooking is that you can actually make a dish without having learned the recipe beforehand. For example, if you see a recipe in a guide online or you just want to experiment, you can pick the ingredients and if they do correspond to a proper recipe that you can make, it will work and after that you will unlock the recipe. But if you want to make collecting recipes easier, simply visit the sprites once a day. My third tip is to catch about 6 fish every day. Fish in this game is a great gift for many villagers and it is useful for cooking, but it's not necessarily a good way to make money, at least compared to farming. However, even if you don't need more fish, I would recommend trying to catch a few every day and here's why. Your fishing rod can be upgraded like all of the other tools and each upgrade will allow you to catch new species of fish. If you want to catch everything and complete the encyclopedia, you will need the gold and then the goddess fishing rod. And for the gold one, you will need to have caught a minimum of 500 fish before you can buy it from Van. In my current playthrough, I felt like I was fishing a lot, but it took me until summer of year 5 before I was able to get it. So if you want to get the gold fishing rod as soon as possible, which is the 3rd of spring in year 3, you will need to catch an average of 6.09 fish per day during your first 2 years and 2 days. Of course, there's no rush to get it, but if you almost never fish, or you just get 1 or 2 fish a day, you may find it pretty tedious trying to get that fishing rod upgrade later on and you'll spend your whole days doing nothing else but fishing. So getting into the habit of catching about 6 fish every day will make it a lot easier to get that gold fishing rod. And similarly, my fourth tip is to give money to Pui whenever you can. The last upgrade of the sickle has kind of a special requirement and to unlock it you'll need to have given at least 2000 G to Pui. You will see him begging from time to time with the option of giving him 1, 50 or 100 G the thing is, you can only give him money once a day on the days that he's actually begging, so there's no way to just give him 2000 G in one shot, and it might take some time to achieve. Therefore, if you ever see Pui begging and you do have some extra money, it wouldn't be a bad idea to give him some and try to keep track of it so you know when you're at 2000. Then, once you get into the fourth year, you won't have too much difficulty getting that last upgrade of the sickle. This is something I neglected in my playthrough and I'm still working towards it, and now I'm close to the end of the fifth year. Pui does not beg every day, which makes things difficult, but when he does, he usually starts in the afternoon around 2pm, so keep an eye out for him around that time. My last tip is a bit different, as it is something you shouldn't do every day, so instead of selling your items daily to Takakura, wait until Van comes to buy your stuff. While it is convenient to have Takakura deliver items in town for you and get paid the next day, 
If you do not need the money that quickly, patience will definitely pay. Van will come to the valley on the 3rd and the 8th of each month and you can negotiate with him to get better prices. You can sell him up to 10 different stacks of items at once and he will offer you a price. Simply refuse his first offer and if you're lucky, he will give you a more interesting one. If you're less lucky, it will cancel the transaction but you just have to try again and it will eventually work. Also, you can sell pretty much anything to Van such as fish and forageables. Whereas Takakura will only pay for farm products. The extra money you will make just from waiting a few days before celebrating will definitely be worth it. So these are just some of the things I would recommend doing every day during your playthrough if you want to get the most out of your time with this game. Of course, there's no wrong way to play and you'll still be able to get these things even after the story ends. I have multiple other tips videos coming soon for Star Wars Season A Wonderful Life, so feel free to subscribe if you don't want to miss out and I'll see you all in the next video.